I uh, sorry, I mean to Star Aisha. Uh, who's with me, please? Aisha is there. And, and, and I am Bindu, but Bindu. I will oh, be hi, Bindu. going. Hi, Bindu, how are you? <laughs> Good, assalamu alaikum. I'll be going in and out of the class. No because problem. I'm going through something today. No problem. So, Bindu and who's only two, Aisha and Bindu, who else? I have anyone? And this is Fatima. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Fatima. Okay, and only. Correct? Okay. As I explained before you joined the class, uh, we will use the original copy for Qaeda Nurani that uh, what you see in the screen. Do you please confirm me back? Do you see do you see the letter and Bismillah uh, Rahman Rahim? Do you see this screen? Yes, we do. Okay, great. Alhamdulillah. So this is the first lesson in the Na Al Qaeda Nuraniya. Uh, we'll start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, but we'll not, we'll, we have to read it the correct uh, pronunciation. So we have to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We have to Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Rahim. Al Ha Ha. Al Ha is very important. Because most of our Islam words, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, all that. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Not ar-Rahim. No, you just make it short. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ahsanti, good job. Okay. You are what, Fatma or Aisha? <laughs> I'm Bindu. Okay. <laughs> because I didn't see your face, that's why I... Taib, Aisha, you read it? Yeah. And Fatma? Okay. So, Ad-Darsul Awwal. Ad-Darsul Awwal means the first listen or listen number one. Huruf al al mufrada That means the single letters. And how is the letter look like if it's alone? So, we call this single letter. Okay. I will read with you the first line, insha'Allah. Alif. Alif. Yeah. Okay, Alif. you want me to repeat after me. Alif. Alif. Ba. 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 Da. Fa. 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 Jim. 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 Ha. 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 Ha, dal, dal, zal, zal. Not zal. We have the, the same fa, same family. In which one you have to put out, uh, you have to put part of your tongue is out. So how is it? Zal. No. Dal. Dal. We have dal and we have zal. Dal, 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 yes, like it's fa, 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 same. Ra, ra, za, za, teen, 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 sod, sod. No, if you see sod in the end, there is the half of that, so we have to say sod. 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 The next one is Dod. Dod. Yeah, that's one. So if you notice, in the end there is Harfuddal. Do you see it? Yes. So, do you know Qalqala rule? No. Baddal with, okay, that's one rule, Tajweed rule in the Quran. If we have it Dal, or there is, are five letters. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, uh, if it, on a dal, we have sukun. Do you know what means sukun? The, the circle one. The so silent. Uh -huh. We hmm. call this qalqala. So we have to like reject. So we have to say so sod. 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 Dod. Dod. Pa. 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 Va. Ra, Ain, Ain, 
Gain. Gain. Not gain. Ro. Ro. Gain. Gain. Fa. Fa. Of. Of. Kef. Kef. Lam. Lam. Mim. 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 Noon. Noon. Wow. Wow. Ha. Ha. Not ha. Ha. It's soft. Ha. 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 Hamza. Hamza. Yeah. 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 Okay. I hear another voice. Maybe another class is behind you. Indo, I think. Okay, because I hear only Bindu voice for that. So what I will do now, I this will is read... Aisha. Aisha. <laughs> Allah, you know what? Maybe we have to open the camera so I can know who is talking. <laughs> See, what we will do now with every one of you, I will read some letter and you have to repeat after me. So I, I can know where is the mistake. I can fix it. Okay. Okay. Now. When is this? Paris, Paris, Paris. When is Kura? Rohjib al Kura. Sorry, that's my son. Rohjib, Rohjib al Kura. Okay. Who will start? Aisha, Bindo, or Fatma? Aisha. Aisha, okay. Aisha, repeat after me. Alif. Alif. Ba. Ba. Ta. Ta. Fa. Ta. Okay, good job. Bindo, are you with me? Right, Fatima, are you with me? Yeah. Okay, repeat after me. Alif. Alif. Ba. Ba. Ta. Ta. Fa. Fa. Ahsan, good job. Mashal, so far good. Because I'm doing like a family. Il ba with ta with sa, one family. Why? Because it's the same shape, only the dots are different. Now the second family is the Jim and the Hawil Kham. So, Jim, Aisha, Aisha, Jim. I stress little bit on the Ja. Jim, Jim, Ha, 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 Ha. No, not Ha. Ha, 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 Ha. Ha. Okay, so just I give you idea. Il ha will ain, will ha, ghain, il hamza, and il ha is come out from your throat. Okay, so all this place it's come, it's supposed to come from there, from the bottom. Okay. All right, so ya mm -hmm. Fatima, uh, jim. Jim, ha, 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 ha. Perfect, mashallah. Now another family. We have brother and sister here. Dal, ya bin, ya Aisha. Dal, dal, not dal. Dal is soft, soft. Dal, it's a soft letter. So dal, da, 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 like dalal, like dalal. Dal, 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 dal. No, I, I say dal. I put part of our my tongue outside. Part. So dal, dal, the, 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 dal, dal. Like I when I say alladina, alladi, like that. Dal, dal. I hear it like a dal, not dal. We have dal and we have dal. Dal, 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 dal. Okay, much better. One more time. Dal, dal. Perfect. Mashallah. Now perfect. Yalla ya Fatima. Dal, 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 dal. Perfect. Mashallah. Ahsantum. Now the next family. We have brother and sister. Alaikum salam. Ra. Ra. 
the the so here's the difference between the and the see totally different i cannot say allazina i have to say allazina okay when mm -hmm. we read in the quran we have to focus because if you change any letter pronunciation the mm -hmm. meaning is different the mm -hmm. totally different even if we change the sign like from fatha to dhamma kasra to dhamma totally the meaning different Subhanallah, the Quran is miracle. Subhanallah. That's why we have to be careful when we read it, the Quran. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ya Aisha. No, Aisha, you read already. Now, Fatima. Ra. Ra. Za. Za. Okay, good job. MashaAllah. Now, another brother and sister. Seen. Seen. Sheen. Sheen. أحسنت يا عائشة فاطمة سين سين شين شين أو أحسنت brother and sister new brother and sister couples mm. we are here working as a couples <laughs> <laughs> so far <laughs> okay here very careful الصاد and the ضاد strong letter يعني yeah, for ضاد the Arabic language uh, it's heavy language, little bit, but I, sometimes they call it dad language. There's another name for Arabic language. We call it dad language. Why? Because the dad is very strong letter. And here, sad with dad. It's not like a seen. Seen is soft, like a smile. Seen, seen. It's okay. No. Now we have to make it strong. So I will say, Yalla ya Aisha after me. Sad. Sad. Dad. Dad. Okay, Ahsanti. Yalla ya Fatima. Sad. Sad. Dad. Dad. Ahsanti. Perfect. So, like when we say Assalihina, like when we say Waladalin. So, we have to say as a dad because some. Some people they say it like a dal or a dalin. It's not a dalin. When you say dalin, like I say harf dal or dal letter, but it's no totally different. So I have to make it strong, like wala dalin. Say Aisha. Wala dalin. Ahsanti, Fatima. Wala dalin. Perfect. Ahsanti. Masha Allah. طيب. Another brother and sister. با و ضا also strong letter. So we have صا ضا با ضا strong letters okay. in the Arabic. So yeah. we'll say با 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 no با then ضا ضا like a ث like a ذال. Part of your tongue is out. با ضا 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 اوكي احسنتي يلا يا فاطمه ضا ضا اوكي احسنتي ما شاء الله because some mistake they say الطا like التاء like if I want to say uh, say طائعين uh, I have to uh, some uh, they say طائعين Ta. It's not ta because already we have harf ta. We have already ta letters, letter. So here pa pa ain. Okay. Now another brother and sister. Ain 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 gain. Not gain. When you say gain, like you say ga ga ga. Gin. No no. It's not gin. It's ga. As I said, the ain will gain. It comes from the throat. Okay. Like the ha and the ain. Okay. So we have say gain, gain, no. gain, gain. You again say it like a ga. It's not okay. ga. It's ga, ga, ga. Like ga, like ga da or al uh, gawin. If I say in the Quran al gawin. Uh huh. So gain. 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 Right. I, I teach you one way. How can you know and from where the letter is come out? What the exit? Before any letter, 
just add حرف الألف يعني if I want to say I would like to know where is حرف الباء before حرف الباء just add ألف so I will say أب correct try by yourself أب أب so from where you feel the الباء come out أب down أب 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 from where حرف الباء from, the from your lips lips correct from your lips yes. صح okay if i say حرف السين اس 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 from where from uh, between the teeth teeth correct you are right okay if i want حرف الشين اش اش between the teeth oh. yes so Open. teeth yes. so to know where is the exit for um, any letter, just add alf bef alif before any letter. So, harf al try to say agh, agh. Ag. You will feel it from throat. Put your finger on it. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, kill yourself. No, no, just touch. Try agh, 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 One more time. Ugh. Oh, perfect. One, <laughs> one more time. Ugh. Uh, not ugh. You go back. No, go forward. <laughs> ugh. 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 Type. Say ugh. 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 Okay. Ah. Ah. You can touch it. Uh, you can say half a line. Ah. Ah. So, you feel ah. it from where it's come out? Yeah, from down. Uh -huh. From your throat. Same uh -huh. thing. So now I have to say Gain. Gain. No. <laughs> Gain. I, I will go to Fatma. Let me try with Fatma and I will come back to you, Ya Aisha. Okay. Fatima. Okay. Gain. 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 Huh? Masha Allah, Fatma did it good. One more time, Ya, ya Fatima. Gain. 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 You say like a gene. Gain. Ga. You say ga, not ga. Ga. Like name Ghalia. 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 Gain. Ghalia. Say Ghalia. Ghalia. No. Not Ghalia. I will come back to you, inshallah. <laughs> when you maybe. When you say us, uh, repeat it one more time, maybe it can fix with you, inshallah. Inshallah. I will write down her full line. Okay. Okay, uh, can I just uh, take this call one minute, please? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, now we have another brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Fa. Fa. Qaf. Qaf. Not Qaf. There is different between Qaf and Kaf, the letter after. Okay. That's also some people confuse between the Qaf and mm -hmm. Kaf. Like if I want to say Noon, Wal Qalami, Wa Ma Yasturun. Different when I say noon, well, kalami, wa ma yasturun. See? Mm -hmm. I say kalam, mm -hmm. kalam, not kalam, kalam. Oh. Like if oh. I want to say in the Surah Al-Alaq, iqra mm -hmm. bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Mm -hmm. I didn't say iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Totally different. Mm -hmm. So, qaf, qaf. Perfect. يلا يا فاطمة. فا فا قاف قاف Perfect. ما شاء الله. جزاكم الله خير. Now, الكاف. كاف is soft. قاف, ah, I forgot to say. قاف also is a strong letter. But الفا, it's soft. That's why in our, in, in Arabic letter, there is some letter soft. Some letter strong. 
you come to read any word or pronunciation or anything, we have to take care of that too. I cannot say cough, cough, what cough this? This no, cough, pull your mouth, oh. cough. Okay, now the next letter, now the single. <laughs> we have single, some single here, <laughs> letters. We have calf. Calf. No, that you make it very strong. Calf. Calf. Perfect. Masha Allah. Yeah, Fatima. Calf. Calf. Okay. Lamb. Lamb. Not lamb. 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 Okay. Yeah, Fatima. Lamb. Mm -hmm. Meme. Mim. Fatima. Mim. Okay. Noon. 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 Okay, perfect. Wow. 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 Soft. Wow. Wow. Not wow, wow like in English. Wow, beautiful. No, not wow, beautiful. No. <laughs> we say, <laughs> we say, wow. Wow. Like واحد. Allah لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم. I know. Allah واحد. When we say واحد, واحد. Wow. 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 You are now perfect. Wow. Like you, like you, like um, you make it like a dance. Wow. Wow. Not wow. 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 Ayuwa, perfect. Fatima. Wow. Perfect. Ha. Ha. Okay. Ha. ha. Oh. Not ha. Not ha. You have to be careful between the ha and the ha. So many days many between these two. Ha. Ha. Like Allah. Allah. Mm, like my name. Hayam. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, Hamza. 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 Not Hamza. Ha. Hamza. Hamza. Fatima. Hamza. No, you said like Hamza. Hamza, that's boy name. Hamza or man name. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. That's the Prophet Muhammad the uncle. No, we not say Hamza. We say Ha. Hamza. Ha. Hamza. Aywa. حمزة حمزة وفاطمة حمزة نو نوت حمزة ها ها حمزة حمزة هاو يو ساي الحا لايك ها الحمد لله ذا بيتش رونغ سو حمزة اوكي سو ذيس از كومينغ اوت ذا وان ويتش از ويت جيم ذات كايند اوف ها حمزة از ات حمزة يس حمزة حمزة نو not like a G, Milha. That's different. Okay. We have G, Ha, Ha, that's different. And we have Il Hamza, something else. Hamza. 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 No, like, like you say, Hayam. Hayam. Ha. Like Hayam, my name, Hayam, correct? Hayam. Harf al H. You can say Harf al H in English. How you pronounce it? Hi. Ah, when I say hi, ha, hi, correct? Yeah. So hi. here, same. Hamza. Hamza. No, Hamza. Hamza. Aywa, one more time. Hamza. 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 Not Hamza, not Hamza. Hamza is ha, ha. I want Hamza, like yeah. if you have been and paper, you can say H, H, A, mm -hmm. Um, Z, Z, A, Hamza, 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 Hamza is name, Hamza is name, boy name, man name, but I'm not talking about name, I'm talking here about the side, the letter, so it's Ha, Hamza, Ha, Hamza, 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 are you correct for Aisha, Fatima, Hamza, mm-mm, no, Hamza. Okay, I won't try you to write it. H A M Z A. Okay. How you pronounce it? Hamza. Hamza. Yes. 
Okay. In Hamza. the first letter is H. Ham Hamza. Hamza, yes, Hamza. Hamza. Hamza, Hamza. Ay. Not Hamza. <laughs> Why you say ha? <laughs> okay. Ha, like ha. Where, where is this ha coming out from? From your chest? From your throat. From your throat. From your throat? Yes. Ah. Say ah. 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 Like ah. 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 Hamza. 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 Ha. Hamza. Mm. Hamza. <laughs> No, not Hamza. <laughs> Ham, when you say Hamza, like harf al ha, alhamdulillah, like, uh, like that. But uh -huh. here, no, it is just ha, Hamza. Hamza. And what is this difference between this ha and the other one? Like, uh, isn't it like uh, the other one is coming out from throat, right? Both of them come from throat. They are okay. neighbor in the throat. Yes, okay. The other one is from deep. Okay. Hamza. Hamza. Are you are correct? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes, Ahsanti. <laughs> okay. I will write Harful Hamza. So I will ask you again tomorrow. <laughs> Hamza. Okay. Hamza. Okay. Then, yeah. 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 So there is two different shapes for Harful Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you notice in the end, the last two, mm -hmm. see where is the mouse? We have yeah. different shapes, okay? But, but other one yeah. doesn't have dot. Yeah, but that's why they give you different shape. To, then when you come to read the Quran, you can know uh, what this letter, so you can know that. Okay. Uh, yeah, Aisha, I will go back to you, Harf al -Ghain. Okay. Gain. <laughs> Wrong, eh? Green. Green. Mm -mm. Ra, 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 Ugh. 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 Ah, much better, much better. Ugh. Ugh. Aywa, perfect, perfect, perfect. One more time. Ugh. Aywa, mashallah. Say ra, uh, say al uh, ra ibin, al ra ibin. Al ra ibin. No, al ra. Al ra ibin. Ibin. Al ra ibin. Alga ibin. Okay, much better. Mashallah, mashallah. You know, Allah, Allah loves you guys. Because first of all, he guide you to, to learn that. Uh -huh. Plus, you take double, double, double good rewards and hasanat when you keep repeating. More oh. than me. Because uh -huh. I am, that's my language. Arabic is my language. So easy for me, the letter to pronounce. But because oh. this is not your language and you... <laughs> You practice more and more. Wallahi, you take double than me. So imagine how many times we repeat. See, mm -hmm. every time we repeat, we do repetition, mm -hmm. you get more the, uh, rewards. So inshallah, I'll get the accept from you, inshallah, and good rewards. Maybe mm -hmm. I think we have to finish here the same what uh, Nida said about it. Yeah, okay. No problem. So what I want from you now, alhamdulillah, we read all that. Dust. But uh, my question to you. Yeah. You know those letters will yeah. adjust because you repeat after me. Okay. I'm asking you, you know those letters or because you're repeating after me? No, I know those letters. Right. Can you but please? Sometimes we make mistakes in you know, pronunciation. Right. Last, last, last thing I mm -hmm. want from you. Uh, Aisha, if you can read for me the first column from up to down, yani from half al alif and yeah. come down. Can okay. you? Yes. Uh, then Fatima, you will read the next. Then Aisha, third. Fatima, fourth. Aisha again, first, uh, fifth. Okay? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Hmm. Alif. Uh huh. Go ahead. Ha. Go. Ha. 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 Ha.
Ko. قاف قاف واو واو احسنت يلا يا فاطمه با 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 خا سين 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 ظا كاف 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 ها احسنتي يلا يا فا يا عايشه اوكي ط ت ت ت الصاف ت ت ط د د ت و د الصاف صاف ثلاثه د د نو د د اها جو هيد شين مهم عين مم لام مهم همزه <تصفيق> Good job. يلا يلا يا فاطمة. Okay. ثا. Mhm. ذال. Mhm. صاد. Mhm. غين. Mhm. ميم. Mhm. يا. Okay. Both of you together. Last column. Okay. جيم. Mhm. را. Mhm. Dod, dod, mm-hmm. Kaf, fa, fa. This is fa. Oh, fa, fa. Uh huh. Noon, mm-hmm. Noon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for fa, not fa. Fa, soft. Fa, 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 fa. Okay. Jazakumullah khair. So you will join my class on Saturday. What time? Okay, you are where in Houston? If Houston time is it twelve o'clock? I'm in BC, Canada. You are in Canada, mashallah. So what time you have now, yeah, Canada? It's like um, eight seventeen, morning. Oh, eight seventeen. We have here ten seventeen. Yes. So three hours. Two hours, three hours difference. Three hours. So if I start at twelve, so. Yeah. Yeah, so Ashara, nine o'clock, I think. Nine in your time, Canada. I um, think uh, it will be ten at uh, Sister Aisha's place, and it will be. Are you eight? Nine. Okay, so in our time is it twelve o'clock? So if you can know the difference between the hours, so we'll join inshallah on Saturday, inshallah. At ten o'clock, we have a class with Sister Dalal. They are before me, one hour before me. One hour before. She's on. She's from eleven to twelve. But you have to decide to be with me or to sit there. Do not join too. I don't know. You have to think and shake what I am and start from the beginning. As what you see now, Sister Dalal maybe she's in middle. But that's why you have to decide what you want. Yeah, Assalamualaikum. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, sisters. So, um, Waalaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, I'll just read the dua. Nahmadhu wa nusalli ala rasulin kareem. Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shahri sadri wa yassir li amri. Wahlu luqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. ربي زدني إلما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين أمين. Okay, so how was the Tajweed lesson? الحمد لله. It was a lot of practicing. الحمد لله. How was something different today? Yeah, الحمد لله. الحمد لله. Okay, so Kennedy, it's okay if I'm doing this class, right? Uh, it's it's up to you. Your choice. Totally your choice. Yeah, like uh, if I want to, I can, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, totally. because I thought I should improvise. I need to. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm doing mine with uh, mine as well. So I think this is something that actually I have a person that I learned from, and her tajweed is mashallah tabarakallah. She's an Egyptian, and she's like an Arab by birth, and she her her tajweed is like super good. And oh, yet, I think I know him know her for the last like. Um, Eight years, and she's still learning. Like she wants to get her taji. Like from all the people that I know, her taji is the best. But she's still improving, and she's like 
this is not something you can ever let go you need to keep like I know. it's like a muscle yeah. you know like a workout so it's yeah. like the more you work out the better you become but like the more you work out the more you want to get even more better so it's like you want a six pack then and then you want like this and then you want like that so it's one of those <laughs> things <laughs> so, so if you're good then you want to get better of course <laughs> no inshallah inshallah may Allah grant all of us uh, and may Allah accept it from all of us Amen. Amen. okay inshallah so we will get to the tafsir for today we will be covering ayahs number uh, we're doing surah bakara and we will be covering ayah 40 41 and 42 so um we have uh, sister taylor with us and we have fatima we have sister shamim and we have sister aisha and sister bindu might keep coming in and out uh, because she's busy with something else so before we go ahead until now we've covered um, surah fatiha in which we praise allah Ta'ala and we understood who Allah Ta'ala is, then we asked him for uh, guidance. We submitted to him and we said, it is only you that we will worship. And then we said that we wanted to follow the path of those people that he's blessed and not the path of those that uh, have uh, invoked his anger or who have lost their way. Then we started with the Surah Baqarah in which uh, first we learned about the book, that this is the book uh, from God, which has guidance for all of us and this guidance although it is there for all humanity it will actually benefit only those who have taqwa and taqwa is a loaded word we keep learning about it and we keep learning about it throughout the quran it's a beautiful and very deep word and we'll keep discovering layers of it as we go on then we talked about four kinds of people and with respect to guidance there were um, people muttaqi people are the people who have taqwa which is god consciousness then there are people who are disbelievers, who understand the truth and yet disbelieve. Then there are hypocrites who say from their tongues that they believe, but they don't really believe. And they're, um, um, they have, uh, they're basically two-faced kind of people. And then we learned about the fourth kind of people, which are the fasik. And what they do is they openly do acts of indecency and call people towards indecency. And they are actually proud of their sins. In fact, they display their sins and they like to like talk about it. And they actually... Uh, show off for doing something wrong and they're pretty um, uh, pri um, like proud of it and their punishments we learned about their punishments and we learned about examples in the Quran with respect to parables and we saw there's lightning and thunder and those kind of things that, uh, that I talked about and then all these groups were together urged to worship Allah Ta'ala alone and we were told that Quran is a miracle which cannot be in imitated and we were told to worship uh, God alone and then we learned about the story of the first human being, which is Adam al Islam, after being told that human beings are going to be created. And then in the story of Adam al Islam, which was the first human being and also the first prophet, we learned about the blessings that he got and his wife um, and the test that they had to go through, the mistake that was made and the way to correct that mistake and how that uh, their forgiveness was accepted and their consciousness of their enemy was developed, that who is their enemy and what does their enemy do and everything. And then they were sent to this earth as a leader, not as a punishment, as a leader, as a Khalifa, and which is a totally different narrative from what we've learned, uh, we see in popular uh, media and other places. So uh, human beings came to this earth as Khalifa and their role as a Khalifa. And now we were going to talk about some other stories and things, but so far, does anybody anybody wants to share anything uh, from what they've learned so far? And if they want to share any thoughts from uh, up till now, then please go ahead first before I go ahead. Anything that you thought about that anything that you like? Uh, it's Fatima. I'm sorry. I got uh, confused. I thought we were starting around now, but I, I, I suppose you're finished, right? No, I'm I'm just starting. Actually, sister just finished with Kaida. I'm just starting. So I'm just asking that. Okay, it's okay. Then I'll stopped. join. I'm sorry I missed the Kaida. Okay, no problem. Inshallah, you can catch up with the recording. I started recording. So inshallah, I'll put the recording. Sister Hayam covered the Kaida from the beginning. She was going over the letters from the Alif Pata in the very beginning. So you can inshallah uh, have a look later on. Thank you. You're welcome, no problem. Okay, so anybody would like to say anything or share anything that they've thought of during the past weeks or anything, uh, then please go ahead and then I will start with the, this week's lesson. If anybody doesn't have anything to say. 
Okay, I'll start then, inshallah. Okay, so today we are covering the three ayahs of the Quran. They're in Surah Baqarah. So after telling us about Adam al Islam, now it's like the next part. And now we are going to learn the story of um, uh, four big religions that have passed, uh, that have been there, the Abrahamic religions as they're called. Um, the four big books and the four big like groups of people, let's say, that we talk about. So first is... Uh, uh, the the Jews or the Bani Israel Quran Quran tells them Bani uh, calls them Bani Israel or the people of the book, and uh, then we will learn about uh, you know the Zabur that was given and we throughout this we will learn about different things but we'll come to that inshallah let's go word by word first so you can see my screen right I number forty it says um billahi yes. rahim ya Bani Israel so ya is a ya yeah, is a harf uh, it's called a harf nida what it means is to call someone someone like we say oh or like if i have to call uh, say uh, fatima i would say oh fatima like she's and i'm calling her but what that means is that that person is in front of me whoever i'm calling is in front of me i'm addressing that person right so when uh, so it's called a harf nida means a, uh, an article that is used a letter that is used to call someone and uh, you're uh, that person is with you or like in front of you or um, so you this uh, Allah SWT is addressing these people and he's calling them and saying Ya Bani Bani is comes from Ibn it's a plural of Ibn means a son and Bani is a plural of son so it's like children basically so Bani means children the children of Israel so Israel what's Israel Israel uh, is uh, comes from the Hebrew origin this word and it it's, it's one of two words called from Isr which is a servant and Il which means God so it's uh, Israel basically means a servant of God okay so it was a um, nickname given to Yaqub salam or Jacob in um, the biblical studies so his name was Israel and that's what uh, he was referred to uh, which means a servant of God in um, in uh, a contempt um, let's say a parallel kind of a word in Islamic terminology would be Abdullah, right? So that's the same uh, meaning, a servant of God. So uh, the Jews of uh, Medina who were there at that time, they were, because this surah was revealed uh, right after, um, a lot of ayahs of Surah Baqarah were revealed right after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Makkah to Medina. And now before in Makkah, the audience was, the audience of the Quran which was being revealed was, uh, the people of Makkah, which were mostly polytheists who used to worship idols and everything. But now, um, as uh, he's moved now, the first, uh, the audience now here is there are different kinds of people in Medina. There are uh, some polytheists as well. There are some people who have accepted Islam and become Muslims. There are also some people of the book, especially the Jews. And uh, they were known as the people who have knowledge. They were those people who had moved from Syria. They used to be in Syria. And they uh, used to talk about the prediction of a final prophet which is coming. And there's a lot of prophets which have come. Final prophet's going to come. And these people had moved from Syria to Medina because it was predicted in their books that the final prophet is going to come. And they had the signs which told them it's, he's going to come. And they, um, and that's why they moved in this region because they believe that it's going to, the final prophet's going to come in this region. Their motherland was Syria and they used to wish that they would... Uh, get to meet the final uh, uh, Nabi and take over the Arabs like they, they would they wanted to like basically um, you know defeat the Arabs and they would say okay let the final prophet come and then we'll defeat you that kind of a thing so the Jews were pre like uh, here they were uh, but they were known as a people of knowledge people who had a book who had the who had the Torah the Old Testament with them and uh, they believed in that obviously and they were very well known so um, this ayah, when it came, it's just addressing them directly, Ya Bani Israel. But how it's addressing them, it's uh, very beautiful because it's addressing them by the nickname of uh, Yaqub al-Islam. Quran could have said Ya Bani Yaqub, but it never says Ya Bani Yaqub throughout the Quran. It says Ya Bani Israel. It's like an honor. The word of the word Israel, um, I know there are like a lot of, uh, historically speaking, and there are a lot of political tensions in some areas between let's say Jews and the Muslims, but Quran addresses them with a lot of, um, when like sometimes you say that, okay, your father was, you meet a child whose father was such a great and honorable man. And you're like, you know, you're children of this person. Like you are, a, uh, say somebody is the son of, um, let's say um, John and John was a really nice guy and you're meeting this 
child and uh, he's like doing something indecent, uh, indecent or something wrong and you're saying you are John's son come on like you can like you cannot do this you're his son like so you're in a way you're honoring the father right so when you're when Allah SWT says Ya Bani Israel it's a way of honor it's a uh, it's not a it's not something degrading it's not something uh, that's talking down to them it's actually reminding them of something that your father, your the your lineage, which comes from Jacob, Yaqub al-Islam, who was a very honorable man, who was in fact a prophet of God, and uh, who was a servant of God, and that's who we are calling you from. That you you are the children of that person, right? So you live up to that legacy in a way. So just Ya Bani Israel tells us that that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saying, O Bani Israel, uh, okay, O the children of Israel, Udkuru, Udkuru here. Uh, comes from the word the uh, root was the ka and ra so the kara means to remember what the kara means is to when some kind of a remembrance comes on our tongue or our heart that's called remembrance so there are two ways that you could remember some uh, someone first is that when something that we had or we forgot where it is or we forgot about it and we suddenly remembered oh this oh yeah uh, like for example um, I'm going through my like I have a, a, a suitcase or an album and I'm going through that and I find a picture of my very old friend of school time or college time look like and look and I wasn't thinking about her that time but as soon as I saw that uh, picture or I saw some gift that she has given me I'm like oh that's my friend I remember her we had such a good time together and that was my childhood friend and we have so much memories and everything I wasn't thinking of her especially right now but then as soon as I saw something it reminded me of her and that's when the remembrance came so that's one kind of a remembrance another kind of remembrance is when you remember something continuously okay so that's like your something is on your mind day and and day and so for example there's a mother whose whose son has let's say um, gone, is a soldier in an army or something and he's gone for a war and what happens is on that mother's mind day and night it's like okay i hope my son's okay i hope my son's doing this so it's the son's like on her mind all the time right so that's another kind of remembrance that never forget that we never forget and goes on continuous and both are dhikr both are a kind of remembrance okay and it could be in the tongue or it could be in the heart so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying here ya bani israel o children of israel udkuru remember so what is Allah Ta'ala asking them to remember? Ni'mati. Okay. Ni'mati. The ya here at the end after ni'mati uh, refers to me, like my uh, ni'ma. Okay. And ni'ma again is a very, um, is a multifaceted word in a sense. So it means blessings uh, it's uh, or favor in a very simple sense. But it also includes things like blessings and forgiveness and respect and honor and basically multitude of kind lot of different kinds of blessings right so whatever blessings that they have ni'mati means like my favor means whatever blessing you have from the favor of god okay so o bani israel udkuru remember my favors okay my favors allati which an'amtu it comes from the same word root word uh, noon ayn and me here again noon ayn and me ni'ma and ni'ma so um Remember those favors which I favored you with, okay? So which I bestowed, alaikum is made up of two words, ala and kum. Kum means all of you, and ala means upon. So, O Bani Israel, O children, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Udkuru, remember, ni'matiya, my favors, allati, which an'amtu, I bestow, bestowed, or I favored you, alaikum, upon you, wa ufu. So, were here means and, ufu means to fulfill something. Like it comes from the root words wa, fa, and ya. So, wafa, wafa means like to complete some, com, to co fulfill something, right? So, um, for example, uh, if um, uh, let's say um, th there's a husband and a wife, and the they are like the wife is sick, and the husband's like taking care of her and like getting her medicine and generally taking care of her well-being, like maybe makes her like a little soup or something and gets her or say okay you rest i'll take care of the children because like um, you need some rest and everything he's um fulfilling uh, like the the needs of care and everything right which the relationship demands and uh, similarly if a wife is taking care of the husband when like he's uh, 
going out or whatever they're fulfilling each other's rights right so they they're doing wafa in a lot of other languages too like urdu and hindi also they say wafa you know like to to fulfill that rights and if somebody's not fulfilling the rights or deceiving someone they're saying be wafa you know like not doing wafa right so basically ufu or wafa means to fulfill so um O children of Israel, remember my favor upon you, which I bestowed upon you, and fulfill. What do you fulfill? Be ahdi. Be ahdi means my, uh, the ahad uh, from ain ha and the means um, a covenant, uh, some kind of a contract that both parties have agreed upon. Okay, and it's like it's been tied up, and this is something that's like strongly tied up and. Uh, You've made this covenant very strongly with each other, right? So there, there are two parties who agreed on something, and it's been like firm. It's been made firm. So it's like a covenant now. Ufi bi ahdi kum. So fulfill your covenant, like uh, my covenant, and I will fulfill your covenant. So you fulfill your part of the bargain, and I will fulfill my part of the bargain. Bi ahdi kum means all of yours. Wa iya ya, wa is and, iya ya. Iya, it's like similar to the you know like in Fatiha we learnt Iya ka na abudu wa Iya ka nastain and it means only you we worship and only you we it is only you which uh, we seek help from right Iya ka na abudu wa Iya ka nastain so it's a similar kind of a con construction Iya Iya uh, and when you add a pronoun to it like so here it is only me it kind of gives the meaning of saying it is me and me alone nobody else like so me alone there's a lot of emphasis in it so it could have said something like the way the speech is written you could have said something in different ways which could say okay and fear me but here it says and it is only me and me alone that you should fear so basically it gives that kind of meaning farhabun fa is one word which means so and uh, rahab means to fear so ra ha and ba it is it means to fear some with to have the sense of fear and alarm that someone might feel when realizing that the other person has a lot of authority and majesty so it's like a fear which has a lot of reverence and awe in it like oh my god like oh my god like this is like supposing there's a very big king and the most powerful king in the then you are doing something in which might anger that king you'd be like oh my god like okay this person rules this whole kingdom and i did something against that so that kind of a fear when you have that awe and you also have that reference is called a rahab so this kind of fear and uh, with this construction with these two together iya farhabun it is like not just an emphasis but it's like a double extra emphasis so it could have been bi ahdikum rah um uh, uh, irhabun right so there could have been the meaning change if there was no fa and if there was no iya but this adds emphasis iya adds emphasis and fa adds like another layer of em emphasis like i can say you know what it's me and me alone and like absolutely me and only me and nobody else and not at all anyone else like so there's like that sort of an emphasis in this so if we look at this iya what it means is oh children of israel remember my favor which i have bestowed upon you and fulfill my covenant upon you that i will fulfill your covenant from me and be afraid of only me we we'll cover a little more detail inshallah in a little bit and the next ayah it says wa aminu wa is one word and a means believe it's like this is like an order aminu believe right so it's like when you when we are giving or when we are ordering someone we are saying like instead of saying come and sit down or something so there's if there's a student and a teacher there who's saying okay come and sit down instead of that if the teacher is just ordering they'll say sit okay so it's like okay sit that's it that one word it becomes like an order so it's like that kind of a thing here it says wa aminu and believe bima in what it's two words b and ma so it means in what what do they believe in they believe in uh, they they are being asked to believe in anzaltu i have sent down Okay, so believe in what I have sent down. Nazala, we learned before. Uh, nazala means to send down something. So something's coming down from a high place, a very high place, and it's being sent down, and um, uh, that's called nazala. And it's used a lot for the Quran. When the Quran is, uh, whenever the Quran talks about the Quran was sent down, a lot of the times this word is used, unzala, right? So anzaltu means to here means I. So I have sent down. and believe in what i have sent down 
musaddiqan musaddiq means something that's uh, sidq it comes from sidq which is sad da and qaf which means truth uh, uh, something that confirms something else musaddiqan will mean uh, that believe in what i have sent down which confirms or which like verifies the truth of of what that which lima is that which ma'akum ma'a is one word is with and kum means all of you so believe in that is which is with all of you wala and do not takunu takunu means be uh, comes from uh, kaf waw and na so you do not be ta here means for you and do not be a form of an order but in a negative form it's like okay do this do not do this so this is like and do not be do not become what awwala the first kafirin of those who disbelieve be he in it so here the word kafir we talked before that the word kafir being someone who disbelieves here it's used in a very literal sense so someone who rejects something denies something after having understood it or someone who's ungrateful so it's used in both of these meanings literal meanings here not the uh, the deeper meaning like we call someone a kafir no, we, it's not mean used in that sense it's used in the sense that somebody who disbelieves or somebody who rejects or is ungrateful for something that you've given them so that person is a kafir bihi wala and do not tashtaru uh, ishtara is like shara it's come from the root word sha sheen ta uh, sorry sheen ra and ya it means like exchange like a business exchange so for example buying and selling something or like uh, you say a trade exchange between two parties when you give one thing and you buy so it will come for it can be it is used several times in the quran sometimes for buying and sometimes for selling and it's like an interchangeable word like you say buying and selling exchange trade exchange so it could be used for that so do not and do not uh, exchange bi ayati my signs um ya here refers to my ayati is uh, the signs it also refers to the ayat of the quran uh, we talked about it last time that ayat could be two kinds of ayat the ayat of the quran and which is ayat qurani and the ayat in the universe which is the ayat in uh, ayat qawni which means like basically any signs of god that we see in the universe like any things we see which remind us of god anything that reminds us of god any miraculous signs is called an ayat thamanan Thamanan is a prize. So when we supposing somebody is it, um, and it doesn't just refers to currency or money. Uh, supposing even in the old times, if somebody would barter something, they would say um, give like two uh, bags of rice, and they would get some cotton instead or something else. So they have given um, rice, and they have got cotton against that, right? So the price of the rice was the cotton. And uh, so today, if we buy, if we go to buy groceries and we buying milk. then we are paying 10 dollars to buy the milk so the price of the milk was 10 dollars right so thamanan is a price and it could be anything anything uh, that you receive against the goods against the sold goods that's called thamanan the price qalilan qalilan means something very small something very insignificant and small something which is a very little value okay so thamanan qalilan means uh, a very small price like a little price which is of no consequence like no value no real value wa iyaya and again it's the same word iyaya so and me alone fattaqun the similar construction here fattaqun uh, for again so fear me and me alone so it's me alone who you should fear right so fear me alone like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying and believe in what i have sent down confirming that which is with you and do not be the first disbeliever of it and do not exchange my signs for a small price and fear me alone don't fear anybody else okay uh wala um wa means and la means not so and do not talbisu talbisu means like to mix up something like so labasa means like it's like for example if somebody sells milk and they put water in it and now they've uh, mixed the milk and water now it's now you cannot separate it now they've uh, uh, now it's all mixed up like the tr- uh, so it is used in the sense of mixing truth with falsehood in such a way that now you can't make out what is what is truth anymore and what is uh, falsehood anymore right so it's like mixing it up and like all making a jumble out of everything and like 
you don't even know right from wrong anymore. So what it's being said is, and do not talbi. So do not mix up. Al haq, haq is the truth. Haq also is referred to as purpose in the Quran many times. So it's um, the truth, the purpose. Bil batili, batil is something which is falsehood or something that has been created. Like uh, it was not the truth, but something that has been created. Like uh, some false thing or a false practice that has been created or some innovation that has been created which was not original intention. So that's called batil, right? And um, like in Islamic terminology, a lot of times it's used as a sunnah and doing something against the sunnah, you say, okay, this is batil, don't do that. This is like batil, right? So it means this is uh, something that is not prescribed, something which is false. Wataktumu and conceal. So do not, so it's do not here is going on here. So do not mix the truth with falsehood and conceal al haq the truth wa antum wa is and antum you ta'lamun you know so you all know here it refers to a plural and antum refers to a plural as well so while in english we are saying while you and you know but um if you um, in simple terms we're putting that but here it means plural all of you right so and do not mix the truth with the falsehood and conceal the truth while all of you, you all know, right? So that, that's what the meaning of this is. Okay, so inshallah, we will talk a little bit more about these ayahs now. Ayah number 40, again, we'll go back. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Udhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum, wa ufu bi'ahdi, ufi bi'ahdikum, iyaya farhabu. So until... Uh, these people of the book these uh, the term jews is uh, or yahudi is a term is a sectarian name kind of it was never a name that was coined by god for them right they were called bani israel they were called the people who submit and they were this was a name that they put for themselves yahuda some scholars say was one of the son of yaqub and that's how uh, they put their name uh, that and in the time of Bani Israel, the book they got was the one of the major prophets that they look up to is Musa al Islam or the Moses or Moses. And the book they got is the Torah or the Old Testament. Okay. And the second uh, major book was the, the book at the time of Dawud al Islam or David. And it was the Bur or uh, the uh, Psalms of David. And it had only rhymes. It didn't have it did not have any laws or commandments. In today's sense, we can say it had the hamd of Allah. It had the praise and um, so it had uh, a lot of praise of God and a lot of glorification of God, but it did not have any laws. Uh, Torah was, uh, or the Old Testament was the book um, which uh, came to Moses, which had a lot of laws in it, a lot of guidelines of, or the Sharia in that sense of oh, this is right, this is wrong, and this is how you should do. And if this happens, what has to be done? And this happens, what has to be done? That sort of a thing was there. Another group was of religious community was the Christians. What they, they are again, um, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala calls all these people together as people of the book, right? So these people had um, the books with them, which were divine books, which were given. And but what happened was over a period of time, the books were changed, and the book, the lot of changes made to the book. And um, there were there were time periods in between uh, the history where there were no there was no book on the earth like there was no torah they had lost it and everything and then um there were different prophets who came and they restored it and they they used to prophets kept coming and coming and coming so um yakub al islam just to give a little bit of history i'm sure all of us know but just to reiterate ibrahim al islam or ibrahim was the prophet who uh, whose father used to worship make idols and worship idols and then he created he made the he raised the foundations of the Kaaba and he built the Kaaba with his son Ismail his other son of Ibrahim al Islam who um, established the worship of God on the earth and another his other son was Ishaq and Ishaq's son was um, uh, Yaqub or Jacob right and then uh, they had a lot of other prophets after that uh, again and prophets after prophets used to come and they would keep coming and one prophet would go another prophet would come sometimes there were even multiple prophets at a certain time some scholars have said they had more than 4,000 prophets in their lineage so they pro they had prophets after prophets after prophets and the other son of uh, Ibrahim al-Islam Ibrahim uh, he Ibrahim al um, sorry Ismail al-Islam he was a prophet and then there was no prophet for a long time 
and then there's the final prophet, right? So if there, these are two lineages, but both are the lineages of uh, Ibrahim al Islam, okay? And then obviously the so just just to give a little perspective, and uh, now that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells has told us, okay, you're going to be sent as a Khalifa on the earth and everything in previous eyes. Now he's going to tell us a little bit about what uh, this position was given to someone before. And there was uh, what happened when guidance came to some people and they were given a position of spiritual leadership. They were given a position of, um, you know, like they had to conserve the book. They had to establish the Sharia. They had to call other people to God, but they made changes in their book. They made uh, changes. And what was the behavior? Uh, they did some things and what was their behavior that led them to punishment and another thing important here is why are we learning about this the reason why we are learning about this is not that we could turn around and point fingers and say okay you did this you did that and by just the phrase Bani Israel Allah SWT is saying no he's actually honored them right so what is happening is supposing there's a teacher and there are two groups of students there and there's um, uh, there's one group which was there for like last one year with him and there's another group of students who's just joined and the teacher looks at the one group which was there before and says okay you know you guys you did this wrong and you know like you did this i gave you this book to do and this assignment to do and you know this is this was your mistake on this page number and this thing you did and you did not study this lesson properly and um, you have to do this and then he turns to the other group and he says okay now you so what was the what's the point of telling about the previous group it's like to the new group in front of the new group was like okay these are the mistakes you are not supposed to make the same mistakes so make sure these mistakes that i've told it's not to put down the first group but it's actually to invite both the groups to the right way and say okay these are the mistakes and just because you learn from this group don't do the same mistakes again you will have the same temptations you will have the same kind of um you know path you'll have the same kind of uh, uh, desires and you would still like just a, a lesson is going on and you would still want to like okay leave the lesson let me just watch a movie tomorrow is your exam the same temptations that the previous people have you were going to have the same things but uh, they they fell into these uh, mistakes you don't do that right so the purpose of learning and for a lot of number ayahs now from uh, ayah number 40 to ayah number 123 we will learn about Bani Israel we learn a lot about their history we learn a lot about um, their uh, behaviors and what happened and then what was the punishment which was given to them because of that and after that punishment what happened and a lot of interactions of uh, their prophet with them what all happened with their history but the point of that history which is really really important for us to understand the point of that history and those mistakes is not to put anyone down but the point is to look at ourselves and as soon as we start going that same way we catch ourselves and we are like okay um I, and first is obviously anytime we learn about history that's the reason in the quran any story that we learn or anything that we learn it has a bigger purpose the bigger purpose is this book is for our own guidance we are learning it for ourselves okay so that said now this uh, what are they being told uh, right so these people uh, what had happened was when uh, the the jews or the bani israel they had moved to Medina from Syria and they were waiting for the final prophet to come they, they stayed here for many generations and the previous generation they would write letters to the final prophet who's going to come they really wanted they prayed for to see the final prophet and they would write letters and they when they were about to die they would like give their letter to their children saying okay we couldn't meet the final prophet but you if you if the final prophet comes in your time then uh, you know like just uh, give him this letter that i was waiting for him and i was preparing for him and that sort of a thing right so it was um, so that's what they would do and they were waiting all of them they had been waiting right and but when the final prophet came the final prophet did not come they were expecting him to be from their own family right like all the other prophets had come from all the other prophets that they knew of from the last from the last so many thousands of years but now the final prophet came from the arabs from the Isma, bani ismail right and then these people who were supposed to these bani israel the jews who were waiting for the final prophet and their um, agenda was that when the final prophet comes we will meet him and we will join forces with him and then we'll defeat these arabs and we will become like all like most powerful and this and that but now the final prophet has come from the bani ismail and then 
instead of supporting, there were some who actually recognized the truth and recognized the sign and supported the Prophet as well, and who um, basically became Muslims and everything. But there were also some who started doing the negative propaganda instead because they were like, okay, this uh, Prophet, if they if he comes and we are going to lose some things, right? This is, they were like, basically there's a lot of pride and we saw the similar kind of pride from um, in the previous story of Adam al Islam and the Iblis, the Shaitan, that he had this pride, the Shaitan had this pride that I'm made of fire and he's made of mud like or clay. So why should I bow down to him, right? There was this arrogance and there was this jealousy and there was this thing. So again, we are not talking about this something that we have to be very, very careful. We are not talking about the common day Jews and Christians of today. We are very, this is a very specific group of people that um, started doing these negative propaganda, which was living at the time of the Prophet They were the they were the group of the religious clergy. They were like the top uh, scholars of the Jewish community at that time, and they recognized him from their books. They understood that he is a prophet, and then they rejected it, and then he they tried to harm him, and then they. So it's talking about those very specific group of people. We have to be very mindful of that part, right? So these people, what they were doing was they were starting doing all these negative propagandas and um, just because he was not from their family, right? So the Quran's addressing all of them. and But but the Quran's addressing them in a very friendly and a very persuasive tone and inviting them to the straight path. So these three verses that we are going to do today, 40, 41, and 42, in these three verses, um, the people of the book are being called which uh, Bani Israel includes both the Jews and the Christians, they're being called in a very persuasive and friendly and loving tone. Allah Ta'ala is calling them towards the straight path. And um, uh, some scholars here say another thing to note is, uh, which is so beautiful, is when it says, Ya Bani Israel, and some scholars have said that other than the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yaqub al-Islam or Jacob was the only other prophet who had multiple names. Like so Bani Israel was another, as Israel was a, uh, another name given to him, right, by by Allah himself. So it was, um, these were the two prophets who had multiple names, and some scholars said that um, he was the only other prophet. So um, saying Bani Israel rather than Yaqub also reminds them that they are the servants of Allah, as we said. And um, it's like, despite their mistakes, Allah Ta'ala is calling them with so much love and mercy, saying, okay, this is what Allah has happened, but, you know, come back now. There's still time. Come back. You're still breathing. You're still alive. As long as you recognize the truth, you've understood this is the truth, then don't stay away from it. Don't uh, don't uh, stop yourself. You know, like come to good deeds and come to uh, come to the truth, right? So um, when Allah SWT says, remember the blessings, Udkuru bin Amati. So what were the blessings that were given to them? There were many blessings, actually. The first was uh, moral and spiritual leadership of the whole human race which was given to them the prophets coming in their midst again and again and they were given the moral and spiritual leadership to call other people there were people all around the world somebody's worshiping idols somebody's worshiping something else and they were supposed to call people to the way of god and call people to the right way and everything another big blessing is that the prophets came from their families like we said more than four thousand prophets came from their families and they had so many prophets they used to get profit after profit after profit. Another big blessing was knowledge. So um, knowledge and beneficial knowledge and knowledge of the deen or knowledge of the scripture of your deen, of your religion, is one of the highest forms of blessings that there could be. Right. So the, the Prophet ﷺ said to the effect of that if any of you were to go out and uh, you would... Uh, work all day long and everything and you would earn say a hundred red camels and red camels were equivalent to like the very high end like say Ferrari or a Lamborghini today right so if any of you would to, were to go out during the day in day work all day long and during that work you would do nothing that would displease a lot nothing that is wrong everything would be totally good all good and everything and you would return home with a hundred red camels to the effect of. So let, let's say today we were to go out and have a hundred Ferraris or a hundred Lamborghinis in one single day. Would you like that? And the Sahaba say, or said, obviously, yes, of course, Ya Rasulullah, we would love that. And he said that you sit in the masjid and learn one ayah of the Quran is better for you than all that. Right? So it's just one ayah of a scripture, one 
one little one verse of a scripture it has so much blessings for all of us that uh, so the knowledge and beneficial knowledge and knowledge of a scripture is like uh, it's like a light which goes in our heart and it like lights up our whole heart right so it's um it's one of the biggest blessings of this world and another blessing that they got was that they had uh, the blessing of iman they had like the the day to day normal blessings of children they had blessing of respect and at the time of daud and suleiman which is david and solomon uh, at their time it was the peak time of the jewish history where they had not just the spiritual but also material benefits in the sense that they ruled or they had like material resources they had uh, they had power uh, over the wind and they they could understand the speech of the animals and they they had like um li- literally like uh, they could travel and have things faster than the emails of today even so they they had like a lot of uh, benefits at that time and that was the that's called the golden period in the jewish history where they had they were they had the kingdom and they had the ruler um, they were the rulers of the world in a sense as well another special honor which uh, is mentioned after this is uh, that one of the big honor is the ahad the, the ahad which is the covenant that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had with them so sometimes we look at a covenant or a contract as something binding or something that we have to fulfill and something but if we think about it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and the ruler of the heavens and the earth he owns everything right he's the malikul mulk he owns everything he has the he maintains everything he has like the stars the galaxies the sun the moon the the whole universe everything he owns and everything he has like he not just created he maintains it he takes care of it and he's the one who's with whose power everything's like with whose permission anything anything happens he does not need to enter into any covenant with anyone yet he is the one who made this covenant or this contract with these people he this was such a big honor just that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not need to make any contract with anyone but even these human beings who are living on the earth which is an um at a very like the heavens are above all the heavens are above this earth and human being which is such a small creation like uh if you look at the size wise we are so small even the earth is like we cannot travel the whole earth in our lifetime right so the this human being and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having a covenant with that human being it is such a huge honor and then to to be raised above the level of any other creation because allah ta'ala did not have any contract with any animals or any plants or any trees he has a contract with us it's and they had a special contract with these people of the book and they were given especially even more honor right so uh, what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying is and you fulfill your covenant and i will fulfill and i will i will fulfill my covenant with you so what was their covenant so uh, some scholars have said that co- uh, the covenant here refers to their whole sharia so what they were given in the torah and uh, that okay you follow the divine commandments that were given to you and then i will fall i will give you even more blessings so the blessings that you got at the time of um you've got all these blessings of knowledge and prophets and you've got this leadership and you've got this covenant from me and you've got these children and respect and uh, material resources and so much power in the land and everything follow my commandments and you'll get even more i'll give you even more of all these and that's one um, one uh, thing of this another uh, one of the scholars of uh, the uh, tafsir ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu who was a sahaba at the time of the prophet he says that this uh, uh, this covenant here means that every group of people every religious community before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam no matter where they were every prophet who came who t- told his people that a final prophet would come and when he comes if he comes in my time then i will follow him and if he comes in your time when i'm not there then follow him and his book and create unity and form one group with him and not a separate group so every prophet told this to their people and um, in fact it's actually mentioned in, uh, in the old testament it's in deuteronomy uh, chapter 18 verse 15 uh, and verse 19 i'll just uh, uh, say this um, i'll just read it over them from here the lord your god will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you from your brethren him you shall heed and the lord said to me i will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren and i will put my words in his mouth 
and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not give heed to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will not require it of him. Right? And uh, there are various parts in the Quran as well that this is mentioned, but I wanted to read that. And in fact, um, actually, uh, because I come from India and uh, I've, uh, I've been trying to find out this as well from some scholarly um, people from the Hindu religion who've converted to um, to Islam and what have they said. And one of the person that I found, although I haven't found the, the specific words, but uh, he did mention that um, there was there has been a talk of there is a final prophet who's going to come, which is there in the Ved and the Puran as well. And it refers to that, but I haven't found that exact verse yet. But inshallah, if I find that, I'll, I'm still searching for it. But if I find it, I'll share it with all of you as well. So one thing was to, um, to believe in the final prophet. So if any of us have heard, for example, the story of Salman al-Farsi. So Salman al-Farsi, he was a uh, Sahabi at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and um, he was he used to be in Persia and he used to his family used to be of fire worshippers and uh, but he was um, unsatisfied one day he was walking and he had to go somewhere and he saw some Christian monks and then he learned about them and he's like okay this seems much better truth and much closer to the truth than what I'm doing worshipping fire right so he started following these Christian monks and then they told him uh, like he started um, basically long it's a long story but then he ran away from his home and he started living with those christian monks and learning from them learning from the the spiritual leader for a long time and when he was about to pass away the 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 person that he was learning from he said okay where do i go now tell me who can who i can learn from now and then he sent him to another person so like that he went to three different um, he just and the final one told him, okay, the final prophet is going to come, and these are the signs of the final prophet. And go to this area, and you'll find like uh, he might, he should be coming anytime soon, and you might just find him in your lifetime. And then he went there, and he um, obviously later on he found. And Men Salman al Farsi, uh, who when he met the prophet, he actually looked for those signs because one of those signs was that if you give him charity, he will not accept it, like he would uh, not eat from it. Um, but if you give him a gift, then he will accept it and eat from it. That's one of the signs of the Prophet. So Salman al-Farsi gave him, uh, brought some food and some things from him and gave the, it to the Prophet wasallam and said, okay, this is from charity. And he saw that the Prophet wasallam did not eat from it. But later on, when he, uh, again, next day, he came with something um, which was a gift and then the Prophet wasallam ate from it. So that was one sign. Another sign was there was a sign, there was a, little um, sign of prophethood it's called a seal of prophethood behind uh, on the prof on the prophet sallallahu back between his shoulder blades and salman al farsi tried to look at his, the, his back to see if he has that sign or not so that was uh, but but it was very clearly mentioned in this book and he had learned these these signs from the christian monks that uh, he had lived with and that's why he could look for those signs another uh, person was uh, waraka which had uh, which was the cousin of uh, um, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khadija Anha. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got the first revelation of Ikra, of the Quran, uh, and he was scared of what's happening and everything, Khadija Anha took him to Waraka, who was, um, who had a lot of knowledge of the Christian scriptures. And he said that you are the final prophet and like uh, your people will, uh, will like basically exile you from their land and they will do that but he could recognize because of what he had studied already right so it was uh, the coming of the final prophet and following the final prophet was a covenant was a contract that these people had of previous religious scriptures of knowledge people who had knowledge of the previous scriptures they had made this promise already and they were they were very very well aware in um, our traditions it comes that the the jews of that time of uh, medina at that time they recognize the Prophet even better than how somebody would recognize their own sons, right? So they were, um, they could recognize him very, very well, and yet they uh, disagree and they did not follow him and everything. Another thing here is that uh, it also tells us, this also tells us the importance of contracts and promises in Islam. It's a very big deal that when we give a word to someone, uh, whether it's uh, it's uh, our word to Allah, to God. And it also when we give our word to people, we have to 
maintain our word and we have to stand by our word right so um we have to fulfill our contracts with people and everything so that which is and it is said that one of the signs of the day of judgment coming nearer is that when people start to um, when the promises and covenants are not honored and um, it is a lesson for all of us as well that muslims today we need to become people of commitment when we give someone a a, a hope or when we tell someone like we should do this or we are going to do this we need to follow through on our commitments we cannot like just like say something and then back off just because we don't want to anymore right so we need to stand by our word in that sense another thing is that um this sorry Allah SWT is saying that rather than just saying, like these people used to believe that they are the chosen ones and they have, uh, and they were chosen in, in one aspect. But rather than just saying that we are chosen ones, follow it through, fulfill the covenant with me. There's not just, uh, the religion was made, people had made the religion into just a ritual and a social aspect. And Allah SWT is telling them that, yes, you got all these favors, but the purpose of all these favors that you're getting or you have got is not just that you perform certain rituals and you have a social life accordingly and social festivals celebrate. And the purpose is that you fulfill your covenant, you do your part of the bargain, right? And another beautiful thing here is that uh, here it's like they are being reminded that Ya Bani Israel, remember my blessings that I, I have bestowed upon you, right? So it's like all these supposing uh, there's a mother and there are like two children and something and one child who's been a little bit naughty and everything and they've, they've grown up like the mother's grown old and the son's like a bit older now he's like say uh, he's married has kids or whatever and he's like not paying much attention to the mom or something and one day mom comes and like you remember when you were a child i spent so many like sleepless nights for you i i was like I sacrificed my like life for you, my body for you, my career for you. I sacrificed my, and like, this is how you treat me. This is how like, you don't even have time for me. You don't even have five minutes to sit with me and everything. And it's like, the mother says that, and she reminds of all these blessings, right? Because the child has been a bit naughty. But then as opposed to this, another child who is um, a very good child in the sense that who takes care of the parents and everything, she doesn't go through all these details of what I have done for you and everything. She just says, you know, my son, just give me a call and I was, I'll miss you. And, this, and that's the kind of expectation, right? And it is so beautiful that in in the Quran, so many times, it's this phrase will come. And as you will see that, O Bani Israel, remember my favors upon you. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Muslims, as opposed to that in um, Surah Baqarah itself, in ayah number 152 later on, they've been given direct instructions. They've been given something like, okay, so remember me and I will remember you. Okay, and be grateful to me and do not deny me. And it's like some scholars have said to the effect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this expectation from the Muslims that they will remember God, they'll remember Allah Ta'ala without the need to remind them of his favors. So we need to rem be reminded of favors when we are like a bit more further away. But we we are supposed to be that close. We are supposed to be as Muslims, as people who've accepted Allah as our Rabb, we are supposed to be that close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we just remember him anyway, all the time. We don't have to be reminded of a blessing. We don't, he's not like the presence of Allah Ta'ala in our life is not like that person who opens that album and then when she sees the picture of her old friend and then she goes like, oh, my friend, oh yeah, I hadn't thought about it for uh, about her for so long. No, that's not the kind of relationship. Oh yeah, she did this for me. She gave me this beautiful gift. And I don't need to look at a gift to remember Allah. Like, you know, like, the presence of Allah Ta'ala in my life and as a Muslim is supposed to be something that's all always there. It's like the biggest thing of my life. Like it's like the focal point of my life. The Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala is, um, is my creator. My Like whether he gives me any blessing or not, whether he gives me the next job that I'm applying for or not, whether he gives me, like somebody has two children, they want a third ch child, whether they get the third child or not or uh, whether they get to marry the person they wanted to marry or not, they're still thankful to Allah Ta'ala. They're still uh, in awe of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. They still love Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala, right? So it's that expectation from the Muslims, uh, from the people who accept Islam, inshallah, that Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala is they remember, they remember without the need to remember, uh, remind them of the blessings that Allah Ta'ala has given because they're always, they're always rem remembering Allah Ta'ala's blessings anyway. Like I could breathe. Like I'm breathing, like so many people are struggling with their breath with COVID, like um, right now, and I'm being able to breathe easily 
without like uh, without any like uh, aid on my nose and i can just breathe when i need to the, go to the washroom i can just get up and go when i need to drink a water, glass of water i get up and drink it my hands don't collapse my legs don't collapse my knees don't collapse i can see so many people in the world cannot see and i can see clearly and um the kind of blessings that we have but we don't need that we don't need to be reminded because we are always thinking when we do something we are saying alhamdulillah we are the people of alhamdulillah we are thanking allah taala all the time we are not the people who are rejecting or doing that and then the next part is that we fulfill that and what do we do we we fear him alone now this is something that the jews the jewish religious leadership of medina what were they doing why were they not following the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even when they recognized the truth they were they were afraid that they would lose their position and leadership because they were the religious leaders of that time right so if people were looking up to them people would follow them people would give them gifts and people they would get a lot of material benefits and uh, uh, if they accept somebody else then nobody is going to come to ask them about okay what is the ruling for this they would go directly to the prophet so they would lose all their importance in the in the tribe or the society that they were in right and they they were afraid that arabs would replace them as the leaders of humanity and they did not want that right so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them by this that see your respect will not go down you fulfill your covenant it will not lead you to for your respect to go down yes you fear that but don't fear that it will not in fact your uh, if you fulfill your oath with god and you he will fulfill his and your respect will actually go up you will actually your your level would be raised uh, in a spiritual sense you would be and eventually you will also have uh, the best of this world and the next you will not you will not lose it might seem um that and that's a trick of the shaitan as well and the reality of this world that sometimes uh, when we look at certain perspective like okay i started doing wearing hijab and people are making fun of me oh my god like am i am i starting to be disrespected am i starting to be that but but no your respect does not depend on those people fear allah alone and when we fear allah alone until we fear allah alone we cannot decondition um you know like from whatever society has conditioned us to see and then we cannot look at the straight path to look at the straight path and to look clearly we need to have that deconditioning to like not fear anything or anyone else and especially on the day of judgment nothing nothing like any money any amount of money any amount of like uh, how much uh, f- uh, children we have how much money we have how much power we had nothing of that is going to benefit us anyway right another thing is here the concept the concept of fearing god is repeated a few times in the quran like uh, taqwa includes god consciousness and fearing god um here we are learning about the the word rahab uh, right farhabun and then we also learn another place khashiya of allah like uh, have khashiya of allah like fear allah taala the thing is that um this khashiya the the when we have the fear of allah only then we will be able to obey him properly right or if we cannot how can we obey allah taala if we don't understand his authority so it's an essential part of our faith that we stay between hope and fear we don't go too fearful that we are like always like you're not like um huffing and puffing kind of a okay i going to paralysis because of fear no not that kind of a fear we stay in between hope the expecting the best from god and also fearing god so in a sense that for example if uh, there's a small child and the ma- mother is really angry with the child then even when the mother scolding the child the child goes and clings on to the mom still because the child knows even though she is angry with me she's still the one who's going to take care of me right even even when i'm afraid of her anybody else if they're af- i'm afraid of them any stranger that i'm afraid of i'll run away from them but when it's my mother when i'm afraid of uh, that of her anger i will still run to her only and that's the kind of uh, fear that we have for allah taala that it is like a um, between fear and hope all the time right and uh, another thing here is that uh, the concept of what we do so sh- as we sow so shall we reap right so if we fulfill our covenant then allah taala will fulfill his and it comes many times in the quran like we saw one you remember me and i will remember you you help us and we will help you if you do good you will get only good if you do um, you know like if you work hard in a, in the way of allah taala allah taala will definitely give you guidance if somebody does bad then they will see those results right on the day of judgment there will be no zulm there will be no like um, nobody would be given um, unjust uh, unjust results of what they have done right 
and it is the law of Allah Ta'ala that what we get is what we've done ourselves. It's based on that. And one of the names of the Day of Judgment, Qiyama, as we learn in Surah Fatiha itself, is Yawmuddin, right? And that, uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Rahim, Maliki Yawmuddin, right? He's the master of the day of Ad-Deen. Ad-Deen is the day when the returns will be given, right? A day, a day when everything will be returned uh, in terms of whatever we do, we will see it there. If we are doing good, if we are following Allah's Allah's laws, we will see it all there. And may Allah make us of those who have good good results, inshallah. In the next ayah, Allah SWT says, وَآمِنُوا بِمَا أَنزَلْتُ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَكُمْ وَلَا تَكُونُوا أَوَّلَا كَافِرٍ لِي So believe in what has been come down. So here, what has been sent down refers to the Quran. So um, again, remember that the audience of this ayah is very specific of the people of Medina and sometimes if we are not clear about the audience then we might misinterpret the ayah or misunderstand it right so we need to understand the context really well so we believe in what was revealed and which was already with you this is an invitation to all the people of Medina the, the Jews of Medina to accept Islam and um, when they were asked to accept Islam they used to say we are already believers like we already believe we don't need anything else and this ayah explains that their iman is not complete until they believe in the Quran and the last prophet Torah was valid before but now Quran is the new final updated version so for example if we work in a computer company and a new technology some new features are released we want the latest version right like which of us wants an old version of things right so what is Islam Judaism and Christianity and all the other religions were there, but some changes were made over a period of time. All the prophets came with the right, perfect guidance from Allah, um, whether it was Moses, whether it was David, whether it was Solomon, whether it was um, whether it was uh, Jesus. Everybody came with the right teachings from God, but was corrupted by people over a period of time. And now the final version, the final updated version of divine guidance has come. It was all correct and valid things from previous revelations which are there they're already there in the quran so um the quran has all those teachings which were relevant are uh, from now from then even now right so we need to follow this to be able to uh, follow the the people of the book they if they follow their books it will automatically lead them to here because their books itself tells them that follow this book right and this book quran does not actually contradict there by saying here that uh, Lima means that it this book actually quran does not actually put down any other books this is quran is not against you it does not condemn your religion in fact it verifies what is already with you and obviously only the original teachings right so whatever were the original teachings of the previous books which have not been corrupted quran actually verifies them and says okay this part is correct this part is correct when we read it when we learn the quran and then when we go to the old testament or the new testament we will find the things which are still correct right and um anybody from the other religion why are they called um, um kafir and he means like those who reject again here it's not a um, the term kafir like previously that we learned in Naladina Kafaru in the beginning of Surah Baqarah that was like somebody who's set in their ways and who's a staunch disbelievers here it's a literal sense that those people who understood and yet denied or were ungrateful right so these people so don't be like them as in if you really want to follow your religion then your religion will lead you here right they're tied together now belief in Allah and belief in the last prophet in Quran they're all tied together now Right before that, they had dif we had different prophets, different groups of people, and everything. But now it's all tied together until the day of judgment, as a means, the only means of true faith. Now, so now the shahada, like it's not inseparable. You cannot just say la ilaha illallah. It's total package. It's la ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. So we believe in the prophet. We believe in the book that comes with it, right? And the thing is, these people, if these people were the religious leaders of that time, right, the, the Jewish leadership and the Christian leadership of that time, if they had accepted Islam, a lot of their followers would have followed away because usually common people, usually in most societies, many common people do not have access to the religious scriptures. And actually, in terms of the Torah, it was not accessible for to the common people. It was actually uh, at there was a point of time in history when it was a crime for a common person to have it, a copy of the Torah. It was only the priest or the scholar of that religion who used to have it. And there would be only one copy and it was kept in a room behind the throne of the king. And whenever an issue was presented, the king would ask the priest to go and look. 
and tell Torah's stand on the issue. The priest would look and then come and tell the people. And obviously, over time, there were a lot of corruptions that happened and everything. And um, so having it in the hands of people, having a scripture in the hands of people would get take away their power, right? And that's one thing because Quran's always been in the hand of people and nobody can corrupt it, right? So um, that's how the previous... Uh, religious knowledge was corrupted and that's how when we look at other knowledge through the Quran it confirms the right part and we can clearly make out what is not right and that also tells us the importance of understanding our scripture for all of us and alhamdulillah for all of us who are like um, Allah Ta'ala has given us the tawfiq to get together for the sake of uh, it's a big honor to be able to even touch the Quran to be able to see the Quran subhanAllah like when I was not able to read the Quran literally I used to feel like when will I be able to read this when will I be able to like find you know like and when you're going through the tajweed when you're making it better when you're making it, it's like so beautiful mashallah so these uh, so these people are told that don't be the first to disbelieve what does that mean that it doesn't mean that if somebody else has disbelieved, you can disbelieve now. No. What it means is that these people, it was expected when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, these people were the people of the book. They should have been the first people to have accepted Islam and they should have been, they had the most knowledge. They knew before anyone else that this is the truth. And they would have been, they, it was expected, it was like, thought that they would be the first to believe, but they were the ones who were rejecting it the most, right? And why were they rejecting it? Because they were selling it for a small price. What was their small price? Because they wanted that power, they wanted the the status in their societies, and they were looking for all of that, and that was their um, the reason why they didn't want to, and that was the price that they were getting against it. But even if you somebody gets the whole world, everything which is in this whole world, like all the money, all the power, all the respect, all the popularity, all the resources, all the, you know, like any amount of resources or anything you get of this dunya, it's still all the benefits, all of this dunya is still a very small benefit compared to the Akhira. Like a hundred years, a 60 years, 70 years, 100 years of life compared to an infinite life. Like what's the comparison? There's no comparison. The, the benefits or the privileges of this dunya compared to the benefits and the privileges of Jannah, there's no comparison at all. Right. So it's whatever we get, if we if somebody does this, if somebody denies the signs of Allah, then whatever he gets in return, no matter how much he gets of this world, it will still be a small price. It will still be something small. And when we um, and again, it's repeated the same thing. And have taqwa of Allah Ta'ala alone. What does taqwa mean again? When we fear Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala's displeasure, when we love Allah so much that we fear his displeasure. We don't want him to be upset with him that we rush towards anything that he wants us to do that would please him and we stop ourselves very strongly against anything that would that has the chances of displeasing him, right? That's one uh, meaning of taqwa, right? And another thing would be like to, to, to hide the truth and then to um, bring out, you know, like uh, to bring out falsehood, which comes in the next time. So what they used to do was, um, and then Allah Ta'ala is ordering them that don't do this. You know, you are the children of Israel. You're Bani Israel. You have a beautiful legacy to live up to. You have your, your father, Yaqub, Jacob, was the servant of God. He was the righteous person. You have so many righteous people in your history. This does not suit you. You, you, we have better expectations of you, right? Do not mix, and that's what he says in here. Do not, why are they, how are they selling these ayat of Allah that they're mixing up truth with falsehood and they're mixing it up in such a way that, uh, you know, they, they're, um, you can't make it out anymore. Like, like we said about milk and water, it's all mixed up so much that they created like a little hodgepodge of everything. Like, there's uh, some truth and some falsehood. So, like, you see some truth in it and you feel like, okay, this is right. But then there's some falsehood, and I'm like, okay, this doesn't make sense, but this makes sense. That sort of a thing, right? And what they also used to do was they would they would hide some ayat. So, for example, there was one incident that happened at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that there was a couple who um, there was there were two married people who were Jews who were brought in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because there were two courts at that time. The Jews were allowed to have their own. Um, 
uh, court, judiciary as well. And the Prophet ﷺ had his own court as well. And uh, Jews were allowed to go to any court that they wanted, right? So it was, they had a choice. And they, uh, there was a couple who chose to come here. Um, and uh, because the punishment of uh, zina, of, uh, you know, like uh, extramarital or like uh, kind of relationship was rajam in their books as well at that time. So they did not want that and they came to the Prophet and the 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 ruling for Rajam had not come yet for stoning of the criminal what had not come yet in the Quran. So they were like, okay, we'll get an easy thing. Let's go to the to the court of the Prophet, although they were both Jews. When they came here, the Prophet ﷺ called uh, the Jewish leadership and said, okay, your uh, decision will be made according to your book. And he asked to bring the Torah. And this uh, the person who came, Ibn Surya, who he put his hand and tried to cover the ayah about the stoning of the criminal. He said, okay, uh, that's it. We, we don't need to do anything else because obviously they wanted to get some other benefit from the people and not uh, give them that punishment, right? And get some other benefit on the side. In the same gathering, Abdullah bin Salam, who was there, who was a former Jew, he was a Jewish uh, um, rabbi before, and he had become, he had accepted Islam when he saw the truth, Abdullah bin Salam, and he told the Prophet, asked the person to remove his hand, because he knew what was there, right? Because he had, obviously, he was a scholar of the Jewish uh, uh, literature, the scripture as well. And uh, that was done and everything. So basically, this also says that don't hide the truth. Don't conceal the truth while you know the truth. And here, وَأَنْتُمْ um, تَعْلَمُونَ means like, and the scholars, you know very well what you're doing. And you very well know what it is the truth. And you want to stop people so that your corruption doesn't become evident. Don't do that. Like So if, if you look at all these three ayahs, they are basically telling us about uh, inviting these people and inviting people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting them with uh, with you know like kindness and with love and telling them about their things but then also reminding them in a good way in a friendly tone in a persuasive tone which also remind tells us that when we talk to other people we should talk in friendly and persuasive tones not like start with like not just like accuse people of things that they don't even have much knowledge about or anything about you have to be kind to people and that's what Islam teaches us inshallah ta'ala so um, I'll stop here. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala help us to understand this Quran and get close to it, inshallah. So um, would anybody like to share anything from today? Then please go ahead. Anything that you liked or anything that touched your heart? Or if anything that you know about this, which I have not covered, please say that as well. I'll quickly say, Nidhi, um... I joined at the end, but the thing is about Akira and this one weighing both of them. Um, the thing is, Allah Ta'ala has given us Hidayah and for us, we know, hold on one second, Nidhi, one second. No problem. Would anybody like to go on? Yeah, I'd like to go on. This is Fatima. Yeah, please, yeah, please Sister Fatima, go ahead. For me, it just tells me that they were, when, when we say the word sell, it implies for most of us <clears throat> money. Money is exchanging hand for goods. But what you said, barter, was the right word of it because they were not, they were getting some money, yes, but for them, it was not just the money, it was the prestige, the power, the authority, the position, you know, um, all that goes with it, they were going for that, um, not just for the money. They were going for the total, the totality of their position, the power, the strength, the, you know, authority, the money, the lots of children, all of it that they were saying, you know, they wanted for that. So for me, barter is probably the best thing. Um, the other thing I want uh, I was getting into it is that what you said is that you said don't barter it for a small price. So for me, it, having said that they were they were bartering or they were exchanging it for you know all that the power the authority the money, a lot of things from my from our point of view from the current point of view that's a lot. I mean that that's not small small small. 
But what the Quran is saying is that it doesn't matter. The Quran is priceless. Whatever price you put on it, it's not enough. It's just not enough. The Quran is priceless. You may think of all the things you may gain in this world, the, the authority, the power, the children, the money, the you know, land, the key. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is compared to the Quran is small because the Quran is priceless. Okay. If Fatima yeah. is done, I'll say. Yeah, please go ahead. So the thing is, um, everything that we look around in the world, for us, Allah Ta'ala has given us guidance, hidayah. So everything for us, we believe Akira is the real. And as you go forward in the faith and you practice faith year by year by year, our faith gets so strong that for us, Akira is real. Literally, like if you are seeing a person in front of you that is literal and real, right? That's how Akira looks like for us. It's literal and real for us. It's real for us. But the thing is, the people who are walking in the dunya path all these all the years this becomes stronger for them this becomes real for them what they see what they hear what they touch what they feel is real for them the thing that they do not feel and see yet is not real for them and it is so literally real for them the dunya here one day um, i have a very very good friend she is elderly in 60s and a very good friend very very good hearted lady astagfirullah she said rama you are a crazy person she literally told me that you are a crazy person she's like my more than my mother's age and uh, i love her so much she said rama you are a crazy lady that's how literal it is for them and we are so blessed that we have this hidayah from Allah Ta'ala and the faith Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with. And for them, it is the dunya is so little and real for them. And it is so scary to see my friends and my people around with this dunya being so little and real for them. It's a scary thing. We are so blessed to have this. That's it. So, you know, like one of my teachers explains it really well. She says that supposing you're sitting in a hall and uh, there's like hundreds of people and, and you're like right in front of the hall and there are hundreds of people there and there's so much going on in that hall and everything. But if you have a notebook or if you have something, something flashy or your iPad or something with you and you keep you bring it. The nearer you bring it to your face and to your eyes and everything, uh, there'll be at one point you bring it too close to yourself it will block your view of everything else. You cannot see whatever is happening in the hall because you put it right in front of your face and you brought it literally next to your face, right in front of you. You cannot look ahead anymore. And that's what happens when we, the more close we bring the dunya to us, the more we attach, get attached and think to everything in this dunya, the more our sight, we cannot see the akhira. We cannot visualize it because we are so lost in this. We are so lost in everyday things and everything that uh, we forget. We cannot see it. But it's only when we put it down a little bit, when we put it a little bit away from ourselves, that uh, we can see a lot more. We, we see our eyes open up and our vision increases and we can see more. But to do that, we need to put it down a little bit first. We, need, we cannot have it too near us and still look ahead. It doesn't work like that. So, Swanla, that was a very good point. Sister Windu, thank you for sharing. Um, Sister Aisha, Sister uh, Tahira, and Sister um, Shami, would you like to share anything? Any of you? Okay, anybody would like to share? Or we close off for today then? Okay, inshallah. So I'll read the dua, then we'll uh, close off for today. We'll meet next week, inshallah. Ta'ala. And um, if you uh, get time, one thing I would encourage if you do is 
if, if you anybody gets time, you don't have to do this is um, whatever IELTS we cover. And I found this really beneficial for myself whenever I learn um, from my class classes, then uh, if you read it later on, just the IELTS and the translation or you just listen to it or just uh, read about it from anywhere. Nowadays, you um, you can find uh, in most apps like Quran Explorer and things, you'll find some explanation and there's some other apps like Quran Hive where you can get, uh, actually you can just read it on your phone, things like that. It really helps to connect with them more. And if you do, then um, it might benefit you even more, but uh, that's just my uh, suggestion and up to you inshallah. Brother. So uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for making out your time. Uh, Subhanak Allah. That is a very good, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. That is a very good uh, suggestion because at least if we glance at desires once in the weekdays, it will help us remember and help us ponder when we have time, even when we are driving or cooking or like doing something or taking a bath in the bathroom. We can ponder, think about the ayas and what Allah Ta'ala might have or even deeply might teach us that is related to our life. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Sister Tila, did you want to say anything, uh, Tyra? No, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for this, Mashallah. It's been really enlightening for me, and um, yeah, I just want to say thank you again, Mashallah. My pleasure. I'm glad. I'm glad it was beneficial. Okay, Subhanak Allahumma, Shadu Allah, Ilaha Illa Anta, Nastaqfiruka, 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 Any goodness that came from this class, anything that touched anybody's hearts, which was beneficial, which helped anyone, was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala alone. Any mistakes were mine, when may Allah Ta'ala forgive me for my shortcomings and may Allah accept from all of us, from all of you to come here to take out your time. I know we are all busy, we all have thousands of things to do and yet you took out your time and you uh, invested your time to learn something about the words of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. May Allah accept it from all of us, may Allah continue to cover us with his angels, uh, wings covering us whenever we get together. May Allah bless us in this world and the next with the best of this world and the next. And may Allah be pleased with us. And may Allah help us be pleased with him too. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.